Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Portal, the 1986 computer novel written by Rob Swigert. This is the Amiga version. Uh, this is our 20th time sitting down with this particular experience, and if you'd like to know what's happened in the story up till now, I do suggest checking out the playlist of previous streams and Let's Play episodes. Okay, there's nothing here in uh, Med 10. Let's check in with Homer, our friendly boss, well, uh, neutral, I don't know, um, some kind of storytelling AI, uh, who says, I wish I could sense more of my peripherals. Okay, don't we all? I lost, I lost all sense of peripherals a long time ago. Alright, uh, that didn't help, that wasn't really a clue as to where to look, so let's do our usual thing and head through the categories in order for now. Um, I'm hoping that things will speed up a little from this episode in terms of both narrative pace within the writing and um, our ability to get through entries. But let's see how that goes. We do have something new here, Terminus Silink Download. So let's have a little peek here. Do we get an image? No, we get the Homer corruption image there. Okay, Silink database. Homer requests Terminus Silink download. Parentheses download concluded via CP Pro uh, hash four one eight seven AD Laden. End parentheses. Tom sat at the table with Beth Rain. Suddenly the walls trembled. Dust and smoke fell from the distant, nearly invisible rafters. Small rivulets at first from the deepening shadows in the seams of the old hall. The faded banners that hung from iron stanchions shuddered as if in the, in the first tentative flicks of an approaching storm, then snapped in a sudden breeze. What's happening? she whispered, staring around in fear. In sudden fear. I don't know. He reached for her hand, and without a word they stood. At the far end of the room a fire roared in the huge fireplace where no fire was before. A nearby tapestry burst into flame, blackening and curling the dim colours of armoured knights, ladies with high headdresses, dense forest and fading flowers. Thick smoke poured into the room, then the building began to fall. They ran towards the door, down along the endless table, set for a banquet never eaten. Chairs fell, blocking their way. Dust swelled up, filling the air. Smoke thickened. They choked as they ran. Tom could hear her coughing. The floor underfoot shuddered shifted, fell apart, then the ceiling collapsed. Alright, so I guess that's the subjective experience of Tom and Beth Rain um, when they uh, connected telepathically. See previous episode for further context. Um, okay, that didn't really help anything, did it? I guess that's yeah, backfilling some detail of the point at which the Antarcticans were attacked from orbit by some space lasers. Um, so Homer said things were opening up. So are we going to get any more history? We are okay. Okay. The history of 2080 to 2089, so we're going to get another timeline. What year? Let me run myself with my notepad here. What year are we supposed to be in as the um, the reader of all this information? Um, we're in Chicago, the 1st of June, 2106. So still quite a lot of history that hasn't been made up. But I guess if this represents the end of human history, as as we know it really, then that could be enough. Well, let's see it. This is usually quite an interesting experience. Um, more data crystal failure there. Right, 2080. So 2080 to 2081. Vega 26 changes course toward anomaly. Oh, that's what's happening in the story. Okay. Regent Sable in Kwantung plans second AEF. Uh, I don't know if I recall what AEF stands for. 
first notion of intercorp study group Anders Flint. Uh, it's the second mention of Anders Flint. I'm slightly worried that we're going to have to look at another character statistic soon. Uh, 2082 to 83, first tentative descriptions of the realm. Second AEF invasion destroys McMurdo and Erebus. Intercorp Council passes Psy prescription laws. Council tries to prevent Psy research. 2084-85, Vega 26 arrives at Anomaly. Mozarting becomes drug crisis in NA district. 2086-87, world population cut 70% by mind wars to 2.5 billion. Larin has child by Shem. There we go, so Larin and Shem are in a relationship at some point. That answers a question I've previously raised. 2088 to 89, Erebus rebuilt. Anders Flint first proposes God's Wind Effect to Regent Sable. So, did, did Regent Sable cause the end of the human species? Is that, that's what that's kind of suggesting, isn't it? Um, God's Wind sounds like a super weapon to me. I wish we'd just get to the knob of it because the the back and forwards of what caused all humans to disappear it's not that interesting really. It's not that interesting a hook. I just wanna just want the fact really. Um, and then you could give me the the colour. That would be a more satisfying way to do it, I think. Alright, nothing in military. Right, well, let's have a look, let's have a cautious look in the life support and see if there's anybody else to look at here. Yep, there's Anders Flynn. At least there is only... Oh no, hang on, there's Petra Steele, the child of Laren and Shem. Right, okay. That's mildly exciting. Petra Steele, born uh, on the 7th of April. 2087 in Erebus. Oh, Petros. Alright, let's have a look at your blood pressure. So, from what point in time this is, I have no idea. Let's have a look at your temperature as well. There we go. Lovely respiratory and GSR. There. Heart rate and EG. There we go. Tension. Oh, uh, up and down. DNA and hormones. One high, one low. Neurotransmitters. There. And glycogen M. There we go. All right. Well, that goes back to the main menu. I'm going to just write um, Petros's name here. There we go. Lovely. And let's go back into the beginning. And we'll have a look at geography. I think we may have got as much as we're going to before we're going back to Homer. Yeah, no new geography. We'll just home to say, yep, come to home, I'll have a file ready for you. All right, so Petros should have a sensible family tree that makes reference to Laren and Shem, with any luck. There we go. Yes, yes, so this uh, populates the information from um, our previous looking at uh, Shem's family tree and Larin's family tree. Brilliant. Let's have a look at physiology and ESP. Because I don't know how old Petros gets to be before whatever happens, happens. Yep, there we go. Um, so we had a look at Physiology and ESP and Basic Core IQ there. We will go back to the main menu to so have a look at Psychology. Uh, we'll pop 
hop all the way to the end of this list for Petros again. I have a look at Petros's emotional um, assessment. Okay, personal growth there, and basic core IQ. There, um, and we will we'll just check in on central processing just in case. Um, no, nothing there. All right, last set of Petros statistics. Okay, uh, basic core IQ, the last set of categories there. There we are. Um, memory will do. There. A social adjustment. Like that. And a logic. There. Okay, um, we will head to Homer next then and see what on earth is going to happen. Alright, so there's a, oh, a little thing has been put back in the timeline here for Peter DeVore. What is it? Peter asked when Tom sat upright. Tom did not answer. His eyes were wide with horror. She's gone, he whispered. Gone. It just fell apart. Now, I. what is the point of us... So we've already read the, the entry that follows this, in which Tom is excited and happy because Beth Rain is alive. And uh, the destruction of the Antarcticans wasn't complete. They managed to a lot. A lot of them managed to hide and stay alive. So why why is there any? There's no point in having jump forward to go back again. Game, honestly. Still nothing. Peter asked. Months had passed, and it was once again full daylight. They were walking through the forest. He and Laren, Tom and Shem. Nothing, Tom replied. Others have tried as well. Whoever tried to get in touch with Thatcher. No one is dreaming of McMurdo, cold and emptiness. It's simply gone. Shem smacked his palm against the trunk of an ancient beech. They walked in silence. So quiet, Peter said. Have you noticed the silence? No birds, no animals, only the simplest insects. Who would notice that with the ice groaning like this? Yes, Peter did not smile. There is that. Can we do it without Erebus? Laren asked. Peter shook his head doubtfully. I don't know. I doubt it. We have to try, I suppose. We've come too far. Meanwhile, Tom must keep trying. We've got only fragments from our tap on the world net polar orbiters. The information is not very reliable, you know. There was an attack of some kind, but surely there would have been a response from someone else, from... Molochnaya, or Muni, or Shoa? No one had an answer. But that's all, it's all irrelevant because we know that the... Uh, Homer. Oh dear, right. That was that, apparently. Alright, I'm feeling a little frustrated. Uh, you've probably picked up on it. Um, there's absolutely no need to backtrack at this point. Just keep forward momentum. What does Homer say? I asked Central Processing to download some military information for us. Okay. Well, you know what? That's a hint, so I'm going to take it. 
Let's go to central processing. Upload military file L stroke three two eight seven six four three F D. Might come with an image. It's classified. Well, not anymore. Okay. Um, download mill data secured. File L stroke three two eight seven six four three F D. Airbus Antarctica damage report subsequent to LP3 particle beam assault 0826-2080. Substantial surface destruction exterior entries. Levels 7, 6 and 5 effectively neutralised. Estimated casualties possibly exceed 2,000. Parentheses based on impact and concussion estimates. End parentheses. Data comp flow from Erebus halted. Activity observed less than 4% of previous levels. Some damage to central power core, open parentheses, amount unknown, end parentheses. Estimated time of recovery, greater than 7.3 standard days. A recovery of what? Interesting. Um, anything else going to pop in here? No. Homer? Oh, Homer has a file ready for us, okay. Uh, but let's. So that was military, right? So it makes sense to look in the actual military section? You'd think. We do need to visit Anders' uh, stats as well. So we, we will. Yeah, we will get around all the categories before we head back. Uh, let's check Psylink. Vega Silent download 6. Okay, this was worthwhile, hopefully. More data corruption, okay. Homer requests Vega Silent download. Wanda wandered her empty halls. The thick ticking of all the fields' clocks her only companion. She wove herself, she was the weaving girl, in the long white gown and drifted through the deep belly of her ship. She tried speaking to the others, the still bodies frozen in their fields who were her fellow passengers, but no one ever answered. She wondered if Peter were dead, if the world itself had died those light years ago are gone. Light years are gone? Is it gone a word? If she were alone and off course, headed toward the maelstrom that was the anomaly, she wondered if the herd boy would ever reach to her across the river of heaven. She was afraid. So I don't know why the attack on Antarctica would mean that Peter can no longer contact Wanda, because that's just a thing intrinsic to Peter and Wanda. So that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Let's have a look inside it. Um, this ISAT Graviton Detector. This better come with an illustration. Um, kind of? Yeah. Oh, home is really flashing now. Okay. Alright. Um, so this is the ISAT Graviton Detector. The ISAT Graviton Detectors were activated in late 2068. Numerous false readings were taken in the first nine years. Then, in 2077, the anomaly was found. The anomaly represented a hitherto unsuspected axion driver within 20 light years of Earth. Cool. Homer wants. Yeah, Homer has a file ready for us. Cool. Let's just see if anything new pops up. No? Okay. Well, I'll carry on with my search here. Um, no new history. Let's um, let's get Anders lined up here. Oh, it's Anders Flynn. Yeah, I think I'm gonna write that in the doc here. Oh, 
seem to have lost the ability to type. That's interesting. How have I lost the ability to type? Well, I was going to say Anders Flynn at the moment. That that will have to do. Um, James Rakin, what have I done here? No, let's just try going back into my document again. No, that's that really is not. I can type, but I can't use the. Can't use the space bar at the moment. That's interesting. That's something I will have to have a think about in a minute. But uh, we'll leave the document as it is. Um, I do need life support. I do need to go to the end of the document, please, to have a look at Anders Flint. Okay, so Anders Flint was born in 2004 um, on the uh, 3rd of January in Oslo. Let's have a look at Anders blood pressure. So hang on, is and Anders Flint is in their 80s, right? By the point in which they enter the story? Which is interesting. Um, right, so that is temperature. Let's have a look at respiratory and GSR. There we go. Um, heart rate and EEG. There. Tension. I like that. Hor DNA and hormones. Neurotransmitters. There we go. And glycogen M. Fab. Right, let's check geography. Nothing there. Wasatch. Um, right, so we need Anders Flint again. We are. Let's have a look at Anders' family tree. Uh, so Anders Flint is the child of Susan Flint and Orville Flint. Orville Flint is the child of Martha Flint and Jimmy Flint. And Susan Flint is the child of Lisa Sawyer and James Sawyer. And let's have a look at Anders' physiology and ESP. There we are, and basic core IQ is coming up right this moment. There we are, lovely. Okay, so we've got psychology up next. I guess we might as well um, stop by central processing as well. That'll only take a few seconds, won't it? So we're having a look at Anders Flint's emotional assessment uh, in just a moment. There it is. And personal growth. There. Basic core IQ. Here. There we go. Um, and then we will We'll just check in with central processing. Nothing new, okay. All right, we'll finish off Anders Flint's vital statistics and then hope, hope for more story, I think. All right, let's start with social adjustment this time. There we go. There's logic here. Like this. 
basic core IQ. There. And memory. There we go. So there's some high bars on these charts, I would say. So Anders Flint is doing something for Regent Sable. I wonder if we're going to find out any details what this octogenarian is up to. Okay, a uh, Homer narrative one. So that's a more epistolary section. Yet I feel joy. Peter came back. He went to work again. Leaner, older, perhaps wiser. Certainly hope returned. And as he worked, the ants rebuilt McMurdo. They rebuilt the Erebus installation. Psyche functioned once more. Days passed, years to the rest of the world, which turned away from the sun and back again every 24 hours. Yes, I know how a day works, Homer. Peter had lines along his mouth and at the corners of his eyes along his chin. His forehead was creased. The muscles of his lean body gained mass. His lean, quick fingers grew more sure. He studied harder, worked more hours, drove himself and the others. He knew Regent Sable would not be resting up there, around the curve of the world. He could sink down and meet his father at the bottom of that awful sea. There came a day when he could talk with Wander again. Vega 26 swung into a vast elliptical orbit around the anomaly, and she could look out. Not with her eyes, though. Oh, not with her eyes, which were closed in her sleeping face. Her hands crossed still on her breast, the quiet hum of the choir field still singing at her its terrible lullaby. She could see the anomaly out there, and she could show it to Peter. It must have seemed awful, awful, a wondrous and terrible storm in the void. Hard radiations flowed and sucked around it. There could be no sense of scale, no human dimension to it. It was not like a sun seen from a distance, which after all is a human thing. It was not like anything, and yet it was a material thing, at least in part. It existed in the physical universe, but it was an anomaly, the anomaly. A billion suns, perhaps, had fallen into it. The light of our sun, seen from the other side, would be distorted by the gravitational lens of the anomaly. Terrible energy swirled around, spewed outward in great jets, parsecs long, collapsed in aeon-long majesty. Vega 26, the size of Springfield Towers, was the smallest speck of dust in a room the size of a city beside it. Okay, very colourful. Um, thank you. So maybe it was the proximity to the anomaly that meant that Wanda couldn't get in contact with Peter. Alright, and we do have a section that is the furthest along that we've got, so I'll take it. Peter DeVore. The angle was bad. The generator's old, Shem said. Ross Island and Erebus were badly damaged. Most of the upper levels were destroyed, but the particle beams did less damage than they could have. And it can't happen again. The folks over at Manny took them out easily. Lots of other cities have sent in rescue and reconstruction teams. But Thatcher's biological co-sponsor Laird was killed. Little Tithus, not so little anymore, he's nearing 18, was badly hurt. Beth Rain can't talk yet, but she's learned ant, si ant signing, and Tom and she talk that way. Their hall was destroyed, and they can't seem to rebuild it, so they meet in what Tom describes as a kind of grey zone. He shrugged. It doesn't seem to matter, though. They've adapted pretty well to not having bodies. That means the rest of us can too. What? You didn't mention that bit before. Okay, so they're alive, but they're only alive in spirit. But, no, hang on, what? What? Hang on. So... What is a bi... Okay, I have lots of questions. What is a biological co-sponsor? Um... <laughs> I th oh, uh, I thought they were in a relationship, right, Thatcher and Laird? So, 
the particle beams were taken out by another party. Um, Lil Tithus was hurt, was badly hurt, but still has a physical body. Beth Rain can't talk yet, but she's like Ant signing, but she is just a ball of energy. What is going on? Peter was coming out of his fugue. I was gone a long time, he said, not responding immediately to what Shem was telling him. Darkness had fallen, and only the only orange magma flicker lit the undersides of the clouds and the small patches of ice that showed overhead. I know what Tom means about a grey zone. Shem stood up and squeezed Peter's shoulder. We're glad to have you back. We haven't gotten very far without you. Oh, a lot of the equations have solutions now. The computations are complete on over half of them. We get only hints of what lies beyond, of the realm on the other side of the portal. We've reached the theoretical limits of any instruments we might construct. That is, in theory, we can't look any closer at 11-dimensional space without going there, Peter added softly. Yes, Shem agreed, without going there. Right. We'll just go to the blooming realm then. Come on. On your bike. Is that it? Is you gonna you gonna leave us there? Alright. Well that was an underwhelming session, wasn't it? Oh dear. Oh dear, I am Well, I it's it's some it's some kind of cliffhanger. Um thank you very much for joining me. Uh, we will plow on with portal next time. Uh, I very much appreciate your company, and uh, until we meet again, take care. Bye-bye.